We will go ahead and get started with our next session. So we will now hear from Chow Yi Li. Chow Yi Li, Head of Globalization at Booster Robotics, is committed to bringing affordable, reliable, and useful humanoid robots to global markets. Chow Yi has over 10 years of experience in the TOB sector. Prior to joining tech Booster Robotics, he held leadership roles at ByteDance, managing complex TOB products, and also has a background in consulting and investment. With his extensive experience, Chow Yi aims to integrate technology and service to provide the best solutions for clients. Please join me in welcoming Chow Yi Li. Thank you. Um, hey everyone, I'm Chai from Boost Robotics, and it's really nice to be here. And today um, I'm going to uh, do a really quick introduction about uh, uh, what we see humanoids would be in the future on behalf of Boost Robotics. So uh, for uh, Boost Robotics now, we are focusing on building humanoids, as um, uh, we mentioned, uh, which is really affordable, which is really uh, reliable. And uh, uh, we hope to actually build a whole ecosystem of AI, embodied AI uh, through humanoids. So a really uh, quick introduction about the industrial trend, uh, trend right, right, right now for humanoids. Uh, uh, compared to like traditional uh, robots uh, back uh, 10 years ago where uh, they are made for specific uh, purposes, uh, humanoids has the, uh, the main difference of, for humanoids is that it's gonna be a, a more rather general purpose robot because it has the capability of uh, uh, different uh, like uh, terrains, it has the uh, better mobility, has the, like, the way for uh, like uh, uh, more uh, uh, complex uh, tasks, uh, and um, uh, but for as a, uh, and we can see two main trades that happened over the past uh, uh, three or four years. First is that uh, a lot of the humanoid companies that have came out from uh, scratch, and this is has been dri like driving the whole industry uh, growing fast. From our like uh, 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 learnings, we found out that even for the different components, price has gone been go down each year one uh, like half of the price. For example, for the motors, uh, uh, a good motor uh, one and a half year ago might cost over. Uh, 3,000 US dollars, while as a good model now uh, would cost less than 1,000 US dollars. So things have been changed a lot. And an another part, uh, a trend uh, that is happening is the breakthroughs uh, of AI. So we are seeing uh, a lot of new work that's uh, done in the AI uh, sector, which uh, is deployed into uh, task uh, dis uh, description, uh, into human interaction, and even into uh, motion generation. So uh, what's in the industry right now? So we can see that uh, this is still, we, we would actually see a lot of demos. And that, I think that's the reason that we have a lot of high expectations for humanoids. Uh, we think that maybe humanoids would actually do a lot of different things in the really near future, in one or two years. Uh, but uh, to be honest, there's still a big uh, gap between uh, research and product. Whereas in research, uh, what we have to do is we have to have something that is really good, that can actually show a really good result. You don't have to be worried about uh, other parts, whereas for products, uh, you have to have no disadvantages. Uh, everything should work uh, in a really uh, re relative good way uh, to have them deployed. So for us, what we see is that there's still a lot of technical challenges uh, for the uh, the, for like having a robust platform, there's still a technical challenge for AI, uh, but it's essential. Uh, the way that we drive the, like to, uh, through this is that uh, if we work with developers, uh, especially starting from professional developers in the universities, the educational users, to the industrial ones, we would be able to actually drive the uh, whole loop of uh, product market fit uh, to, the, to the next step. But still, uh, the, uh, what are the use cases now for humanoids? It's still in a very early stage, so we are only seeing a, a few use cases that are actually available for scientific research, for competitions, for uh, exhibitions, for educations. Uh, although we believe in the long, longer time of the future, there will be uh, a multitask humanoid that's doing a lot of things in, like, uh, in the logistic areas, in the industrial areas, in the at-home areas. But still, for now, we believe that there's still a lot of work to be, do, uh, to be done to actually introduce the products uh, uh, humanoids uh, to this area. So what's most important? First of all, we think it's essential to have a product that's really reliable and that's really robust. So um, but that's why uh, we have set the goals to have the humanoids <laughs> capable of doing a lot of shock tests. Uh, it's not afraid of falling. It's even if the robot falls, um, it's uh, literally okay for the robot to actually get up again. 
So we are not like uh, we, we are not uh, pulling the robot. That's the only way that we are showing how uh, things uh, to make it stronger. And second, for humanoids, uh, because it's a bipedal robot, uh, what we expect is that it will have uh, better mobility uh, compared to wheeled robots. So it's essential for a humanoid robot to have a great locomotion skills, uh, for it to walk in our directions, for it to uh, resist pushes, for it to actually uh, be good at uh, like uh, getting up once it falls. Then, of course, uh, the next important part for humanoids would be the ability to uh, handle uh, a complex task. For example, in this case, uh, we are showing the robot doing uh, grabbing bottles from the table autonomously, then handing it to another person. Uh, we are also having solutions of, uh, around the like, industry for uh, our partners to actually have dexterity hands uh, deployed on different kind of humanoids. So these are like the approaches that are done for the mani manipulation side in order to have humanoids uh, working on complex tasks. And uh, we want to show a whole picture of uh, embodied AI. Uh, in, the really, uh, in the longer future, we believe that uh, uh, in order to have a de uh, humanoids deployed everywhere, there's uh, got to be a developer ecosystem that uh, could be built on humanoids. For example, developers could actually do, uh, do humanoids that are doing uh, in real uh, scenarios, uh, doing work, doing guidance, doing uh, last mile delivery, doing cleaning at homes. Uh, but in order to support this to happen, we think two things are very essential. The first part is from the end side, whereas there should be a really good hardware, there should be a really good uh, software uh, development too, so just like how uh, smartphones now. Uh, nowadays, uh, I, me, myself, previously, I was uh, working in the uh, software industry, and while we are developing applications for smartphones, there were great uh, development tools. For example, if you develop a Android app, there was Android Studio, which is super easy to use, but for uh, robotics now, we have to use open source the tools like ROS2, which is a lot of integration work should be done. Uh, so we think that uh, from the edge, uh, end side, there should be a great hardware platform and a great uh, uh, a great uh, development tool and operating system that goes with. Where on the cloud-based side, uh, we have seen a promising work that has been done, especially for uh, like foundation large large language models. But for robotic large language models, there should be uh, there's still a lot of work to be done in order to actually support uh, great work that uh, uh, that uh, humanoids can actually conduct and can actually uh, do in the real world. So. Uh, we, as we, we mentioned, we have to build an ecosystem that actually had, can deploy uh, humanoids uh, in different scenarios, so there should be a lot of developers. But where would the developers come from? Uh, we have seen that uh, there will be migrations of developers uh, uh, through the past uh, areas from like P uh, the previous PC developers. Uh, they find out, okay, at the beginning, everyone's saying that software is something we should like focus on, not web development. But as time to, uh, evolves, we've, we've seen a lot of like uh, software developers migrated to web developers, and then to smartphones. We've seen a lot of web developers migrating to app developers. So we believe that also in the future, uh, it would be essential to actually have more people from the uh, developer uh, society, uh, community to actually transform to robotic developers. That's why we think it's essential to build something that's easy to develop, something that's easy to use. And for the platform that we use, we also see a trend. That the trend is that uh, all kinds of platforms are specific task-based platforms, and they would actually transform to a, a general purpose platform, from the typewriters to a computer, from the, uh, uh, from the MP3 and for the, the cameras to a smartphone, from uh, the AGVs, open robotic apps, uh, until now to a more general uh, purpose uh, uh, ro robot. And a quick introduction about ourselves, because time is limited. We are uh, Booster Robotics, and we have been building humanoids. Uh, uh, although we are really new, we only founded in 2023, but we have been in the labs building humanoids for over 20 years, and we have been using humanoids to compete in competitions, just like RoboCup, to actually test out the abilities of humanoids. 
And we would like to bring a really robust, a really developer-friendly, smaller robot that could be actually developed by one, one developer to the market, which has a great computing power, which has uh, uh, a lot of sensors that goes with it and can be added by developers. And, and we will also have uh, a really open uh, second developer platform with all kinds of APIs, with all kinds of language supported, and all kinds of simulation environments supported. And once again, I want to uh, like uh, re. Uh, 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 once again, I want to like to, uh, to uh, s uh, say our mission again. So our mission is to unite developers uh, globally to drive productive evolution. So we think this is the only way that humanoids could be actually deployed into the real world. It's impossible for one company to actually start uh, uh, to be everything in humanoid. So uh, we would like to uh, embrace a lot of new developers together with us to actually bring the uh, uh, evolution, uh, uh, productivity evolution together. Thank you. And questions. <laughs> Yes, please. So you have large language models in the cloud. What happens when there is not enough bandwidth? Um, it's actually the same as what happens when the phone doesn't have enough bandwidth when you communicate with a uh, like um, with uh, ChatGPT. So normally the robot will stop talking. And um, if it was the robot actually commanding, the, uh, it was actually a command that was given to the robot uh, through the large language models, then the robot will stand still until it gets the command and then it will move again. So uh, the models that are used in cloud were mainly for decision making instead of for, for like locomotion and motion. So uh, whereas motion is still done uh, in the edge side to ensure that the robot works even if there's poor bandwidth uh, in the internet. And w are you considering maybe putting models that run on the machine itself? Yes. So um, we have already deployed the edge side models uh, on the robot. For example, an uh, 8 billion parameter model, which is OK for human interaction, for just uh, talking, for uh, like doing th uh, simple things uh, on the humanoids. Uh, and I think this is also essential for the future, because uh, at home scenarios, we don't actually hope our data would be sent to the cloud, uh, cloud so whereas we hope everything would be done either uh, in the robot or somewhere in the in-house. Yes. Um, the videos you're showing are really impressive of it moving fast and agilely. If you scaled it up to full height to human and adult size, would all be, would you do all the same behavior or is it making it so that it's taller and slower? Um, I think for the locomotion part, it's actually similar for different sides of the robot. It might be like for the hardware part, it might be better for uh, to have smaller ones uh, to make them durable. But for the locomotion, uh, using the learning-based algorithms, it's actually the same deploying in different sides of robots. So we have been done tests on like uh, adult-sized humans, robots, and even like kid-sized ones. Uh, they would actually migrate easily from different sides of robots. Thank you so much. That's all the time we have for questions. Thank okay, you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.